that's the 23rd of March, 2022. So when we establish ourselves in right view, what we see is these noble truths of dukkha, suffering, uh, its origin, its cessation, and the path leading to that cessation. And establishing right view is a very good form of kamma, of action, and we gain wisdom. And so people who are wise, they create very good kamma. They see that bad kamma, these harmful deeds, are the causes for suffering to arise, the causes for our minds to stay cycling in birth and death in the cycle of samsara. And so we can see that we can take samsara um, and next life as being like tomorrow. But we don't yet see tomorrow. So we can't yet see these next lives. But that's what they're like. And if we have right view, um, then we will understand that if we do goodness, then we will get results of happiness from that. But if people don't have wisdom, then they don't see how these good deeds lead to happiness. And so for people born into the world, they have delusion, they have greed and hatred, and they have fear. And it's through this that they discriminate and separate out into me and you. So all minds that have been come that have uh, been born in this world, they take residence in these four elements of earth, water, fire, and air. But through the delusion present within those minds, they take these four elements as being me, belonging to me. Then they separate them out, and discriminate, and then harm comes from that, and things get very chaotic. So if we don't have kindness for one another, if we're lacking these divine abidings, then we easily harm each other. And we just can't stay on in this world. Or well, the world can't survive. And what we mean by the world here is the beings that live in this world. It's very difficult for them to survive. But if the minds, the minds of beings have kindness, and then we're able to live with one another because kindness is a quality that supports this world. It's something that's very important. So therefore, we need to have kindness in the hearts. And even with this quality of kindness, there's still suffering here because we have, to, or we have these five khandas. But we don't increase that suffering. We don't make it worse by harming each other. We don't um, afflict one another with pain through our actions of body, speech, and mind. And so if we're going to summarize this, this not harming each other is keeping the precepts, and these five precepts. And when we have these, or we have virtue in the mind, and we have wisdom, and we can create goodness easily. But if we have delusion there, and then we create a lot of bad karma. All people who are born into this world have delusion in their hearts when they come. There's the sense of me and mine. And so they compete and fight with one another. And there's a lack of kindness towards each other. And everything that they do is done for the sake of me. But some people, they have... Uh, kind of develop barami before they have these old, this old karma or this old habits waiting for them. And when the time is ripe, then they can change. Uh, just like Angulimala, he had a lot of uh, bad results from bad karma that he had to receive, and that got him lost. But he was able to find the right path and through the kindness of the Buddha and become an arahant. So we can look at people in the present moment um, 
Well, we shouldn't just look at what we see now in the present moment and see that maybe some people are lacking sila, lacking virtue. But it's possible for them to change, and sometimes very quickly. There can be people who are very deluded, going out at night, drinking, watching shows. But they can change as well. And they can change through the Dhamma of the Buddha and kind of, uh, improve their life and start creating good karma, start creating goodness in the present moment. So for us, people who have this interest in the Dhamma, we should be aware that we have created a lot of goodness before, a lot of good karma, in order to have this interest. We have practiced this path of sila, samadhi, and panya before. And for those who have the faith to ordain, and then they must have created the causes for this faith before. So some people are over the age of 60 when they come to ordain. But even though they're quite old already, they're not heedless. They do a lot of sitting meditation, walking meditation, a lot of chanting. And they really take the practice on for real. Because they see that they've got a little bit of time left, so they don't want to waste any of that time. If they're 60 years old now, they live to the age of 80, and they've just got 20 years left. But it's also not sure. It's very possible to die before that. And those of us who are young, we shouldn't think that we will live to the age of 80, because many people die before that age. So therefore, we must train these minds, train them to have samadhi, or to have sati, as uh, mindfulness. And if we have mindfulness, then we're close to the Buddha. When mindfulness is present, then the Buddha comes and he's close by. And so if we cultivate mindfulness constantly, mindfulness is present with us, then the Buddha, this nature of awakening arises within our hearts. So when we have mindfulness, then the Buddha arrives. And with mindfulness present, then the Buddha is there. And the meaning of that is that we keep our hearts with sila, samadhi, and panya, with this virtue, collectedness, and wisdom, always building up goodness. And this is a great blessing in our lives, because all of us want to be blessed. And practicing dhamma is the highest kind of blessing. And so we do the morning chanting, the evening chanting. For the laity, they offer food to the monks and arms round. We all listen to the Dhamma. And the laity do their work with mindfulness and wisdom and forbearance. And if we carry on doing that, then one day we will need to see into truth. We'll need to destroy this fetter of Sakaya Ditti, of self-view. Because normally when we see a form, then the mind proliferates and takes that as self. And why don't we see into not-self? Why don't we know that? It's because our wisdom is lacking. Samadhi is still not stable. Mindfulness isn't constant. And our sila isn't yet complete. And so when we look at these forms, we see people. But what we need to see, rather, is that there isn't a being, an individual, a self, a me or a you, that taking it in that way is incorrect. And when there's speech, when the body speaks, then it's the mind that orders that speaking to happen. It's not that the body does that by itself. And if the body is uh, damaged, if it's uh, lacking in some way, then the mind may give that order, but it just doesn't speak. And so it's like a broken robot. And so we can see that these bodies are just like robots that the mind uses. But we've stayed in them for such a long time now that we get the understanding that they are me, they belong to me, that we cling to them through delusion. So we could say that it's like we live in a house, 
And before we were born, our father had rented this house. He's not the owner of it. But then the child gets born and it sees that there's this house that I stay in and it thinks that it belongs to me. And this father's also uh, rented a car and the child thinks that that, fa- that car really belongs to my father, it belongs to me, it's ours. It doesn't know the truth. And, but the adults, the parents, they know what's going on. They know that these are just rented things, that they don't actually belong to us. And that knowledge is clear within them. So it's just like these bodies of ours. If we're children, that, what that means is that our mind is a child. It doesn't have wisdom, it doesn't have understanding. It thinks that this body, it's me, it's mine. It takes these five khandhas as being really me, this is who I truly am. And the mind in this state is the mind of a child. But if we practice having mindfulness, making our samadhi firm, allowing wisdom to arise, then we contemplate and see into the emptiness of all physical and mental things. See how these are things that we shouldn't attach to. How everything which arises is of the nature to cease. And this is what the Buddha taught in the Deer Park. And through this, Venerable Anya Kundanya saw into the Dhamma. And so his mind then became an adult. It was no longer childlike. He knew the truth of the matter. He could see the truth like this. And so his mind developed into that of an adult. And so we do this by seeing and knowing a truth that these things are not self. But the people in the world, their minds are still childlike. They think that they belong to me. These things are mine. It's just like children playing with one another and they take some sand and they suppose that it's salt. They suppose that they're making food out of it, but it doesn't taste salty. And so these are just conventions that we use. And so a children or a child who is born, then they take this home, this car, as being mine, belonging to my family. But the adult who has walked along this path of sila, samadhi and panya already sees clearly into the truth of the matter, that this doesn't belong to me, it's not really mine. And the clarity of that knowledge destroys the wrong view of Sakaya Ditti, of self-view, this view of me, of mine. Because when we get old, then if we have Sakaya Ditti, it's me who is old. When we grow sick, then I am sick. And when we die, it's me that dies. But in truth, this is just nature operating according to nature. And we don't like old age sick and sickness and death, but we do like birth, don't we? We think that birth is happiness, it's something extremely good. But old age sickness and death, that suffering, we don't want it. But we don't see how this happiness of birth is the cause for suffering to arise. So we should practice to be beyond this happiness and suffering, which means that we don't get born. We are outside of birth and above death, beyond cause and above effect, beyond happiness and above suffering. And this is Lokutara, the transcendent Dhamma. So we should build up our Bharami, be meditating. And this cultivation of our hearts brings great benefit. And something that both monks and laity can do, both the young and the old. And so we should set our hearts on this practice in order to take apart, dismantle this becoming and birth. And becoming, it's just a feeling that comes up in our heart. And if we can take that apart, then there's no eighth life. We've destroyed Sakaya Ditti, self-view, we've seen clearly. So we can 
Look at this now in this developed world that we have. There's this technology and smartphones. And when people take uh, photos, maybe photos of themselves, um, then there are effects that they can uh, use to modify those images and change different parts of the face. But if we see an image of someone and we know that it's been modified, that these effects have been put in, and we know that it's not really the face of that person, that their face isn't actually like that, it's just the effect that's been used that's made their face that way. And if we know that, then we know that that's not truly their face. And so it's like how these four elements of earth, water, fire, and air come together uh, to uh, form these beings and people. But if we see how that's just a collection of elements, then we have destroyed Sakayaditi. We know into the truth of the matter, this truth of not-self. And we've seen into the Dhamma. And so if we see all these forms as just being like effects, and then we know the truth. We see how they're just four elements, that there's no real self there within it. And if the path comes together in harmony, then we can see this with clarity. And there's no more doubts, because we've seen the Buddha, we've seen this nature of awakening. But it also takes time to get to this point. We need to endure, we need to put in our effort to persist. Because what we're after is something very great. It's above the world, it's transcendent. It's not just some ordinary, everyday thing. For the most part, people in this world, they desire pretty common things. They want fame and wealth and status and uh, but what we are after is above that, and transcends that, and transcends the world, Lokutara. And it's something that's difficult to reach. And so we need really to forbear, to have a lot of effort, to be very sincere, to really set our hearts on this, to not hold back, to give it everything we've got. Because the Dharma is there on the shores of death. And if we just practice in kind of a frivolous way, then we're not going to get there. We won't be able to see how the world arises and ceases, how it's not self. But if we can see into that, then we see the Dhamma. So may all of you set your hearts on this.